Hello, my name is Justin Jacobs. I'm a farmer in northwestern North Dakota. Uh, I've been farming since 2016. I was not born and raised on a farm, but instead uh, have start have started farming on my own out of a desire and a passion to take care of the land and uh, take care of what God has given us. We have grown a variety of crops since 2016. We've grown uh, soybeans, we've grown spring wheat, durum wheat, flax, yellow peas, uh, maple peas, canola, and now this year mustard and rye. So I want to talk tonight a little bit about what our story is with intercropping. And the story starts in 2018. Well, it actually starts prior to 2018. It starts in uh, starts when I was when I was a young kid. Um, I didn't grow up on a farm, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I grew up moving around the countryside, uh, but I always knew that I wanted to return to the farm, and I knew that I wanted to be a farmer. Well, farming has been in my blood. Uh, my uh, great-grandparents were farmers, my great-aunts and uncles were farmers, and I wanted to follow in their footsteps. So throughout high school and throughout college, I did whatever I could to try to understand uh, what it would take to be a farmer. And it's a very difficult road. It's, it's a very uh, treacherous path. It takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of guts to try to jump into something because there's a lot that can go wrong with farming. But there's also a lot that can go right. So throughout uh, throughout college and high school, um, I spent some time working for, uh, for my relatives on their farm, learning a little bit, and then... Uh, I got to meet some other farmers. I worked as a farm hand for a while, uh, learning some some of the ins and outs of farming. And I got to see a variety of production practices throughout these experiences. While in uh, while in school, at, attempting to get my uh, agricultural degree in crop and weed science. Um, it was brief. There was a production practice that, that was briefly mentioned, and it was called intercropping. Now, this kind of piqued my curiosity because uh, prior to this point, we had been talking primarily about monoculture crops and how to cultivate uh, a single crop species, uh, grow it from the point of planting to the point of harvest through the use of uh, fertilizers, um, herbicides, and, and just all production practices. But one of the things that caught my interest when I heard about intercropping was the potential to grow two different crops within the same field and potentially increase your efficiency. Uh, so I began by asking the question of what is intercropping, how is it done, and are, are there any farmers who are currently uh, doing this? Uh, this kind of led me on um, the journey of, of finding some uh, local producers. Uh, Gabe Brown was, was one of them, um, as well as another gentleman by the name of Derek Axton, who were currently practicing uh, intercropping in the northern prairies. Um, this also uh, led me down a, a path of uh, research and working working with other research individuals and uh, trying to identify some of how intercropping can be done, how it can be practiced, and what some of the improvements that are needed for intercropping are. So. Now, in 2018, this is our third, third, this would be our third crop in 2018. Uh, previously, we had grown soybeans, peas, and uh, durum wheat, and flax. 
in 2018 I had decided that I wanted to try intercropping and I was not a hundred percent certain of how I was going to accomplish it but I knew that I wanted to give it a shot so I started with a combination of Durham and yellow peas while it did not look the prettiest in the field um, there there was some noticeable differences such as there was uh, some difference in the uh, durum that had been intercropped with the peas opposed to the durum that had been grown straight however i found out that this was a very difficult uh, difficult mix to separate uh, so we did not attempt to repeat it in 2019 we again tried intercropping but this time using uh, canola and uh, maple peas maple peas are a specialty market class and are used within the bird seed market as well as kind of a specialty diet um diet type type p type p now in 2019 we also had a contract for just straight canola and uh, the straight canola was mature a little bit faster than the intercropped field was so i made the management decision to harvest the straight canola first however this decision kind of cost us dearly as uh, september of 2019 we received nearly 10 inches of rain in northwestern north dakota now this was this is a state record um, for the most amount of rain in one month. Now in our environment, we typically receive uh, about 8 to maybe 12 inches of rain. Uh, we're a semi-arid environment. So to receive 10 inches in September alone was um, kind of rather startling. But what this did was this took my intercropped field of peas and canola and laid it completely flat any of the canola that uh, had matured shattered out completely and the peas were laying against the ground and even more difficult to harvest so in 2019 we once again had a, had kind of a failure of a crop on the inner cropping side in 2020 we decided to go back to yellow peas and again continued with canola and we were able to uh, actually harvest a very uh, nice crop mostly surviving on the precipitation and the moisture that had fallen in september of 2019 as in 2020 we received very little rainfall um, we were actually able to harvest about 25 bushels worth of canola and about 16 bushels worth of peas and the kind of neat thing about that part of the story is that we used only 60 pounds of nitrogen now the recommendation for growing canola on a straight setting is to use about 120 pounds of nitrogen so we used half the amount of nitrogen and yet produced a uh, crop of canola that was just just barely below the average of 30 bushels but yet we traded that five bushel difference for 16 bushels of of peas we decided to uh, try intercropping again in in 21 we did uh, peas and canola but then as a result of our drill uh, miss metering we ran out of canola seed and ended up switching part of the field to uh, flax and peas now in 21 was another dry year and so it was deceptive in that uh, it looked like the peas and the flax had matured a little bit closer together than they actually had so we decided to try try that little experiment on a somewhat larger scale again in 20 in 2022 where we har 
or we planted and harvested uh, twice as many acres of the peas and flax. Uh, however, as a result of 2022 having a little bit moisture, a little bit more moisture than the previous year, the flax held on. It did not mature as fast, so the peas were at the point of wanting to shatter out, and a uh, management decision was made to try and cut as soon as possible. We were able to harvest about uh, 10 to 15 bushels of peas and another uh, 10 to 15 bushels per acre of flax off of that particular field. And now in 2023, we are uh, currently growing uh, winter Austrian uh, peas along with uh, mustard. So that's a very brief introduction to our story of intercropping. Continue to stay tuned on our channel for updates on, on our intercropping journey, as well as just our farm life in general. Uh, I do plan on uploading a video at some point uh, describing some of my observations with intercropping as well as what I believe are some of the keys for intercropping going forward. Uh, that video will include a history of intercropping and some of the uh, some of the background to intercropping. Um, any, anyways, thank you for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and YouTube. And have a great day.